In this video, you'll learn how dependency injection makes your code cleaner, more flexible, and easier to test. This is something that PHP frameworks like Laravel and Symfony make use of extensively. Previously in this series, we learnt how to use a factory to create stream and response objects, so we no longer need to create those objects directly. However, we are creating the factory object itself in here. Although we can switch between different factory packages by just changing the line where we are creating the factory object, this does tightly couple this controller class with the factory class we are using. This might be okay if we have just one controller class, so if we wanted to change this, we would only have to do it in one place. If we have many controller classes to change though, this would quickly become a problem. If a class depends on an object of another class, this object is known as a dependency. So, instead of creating this object directly in here, we create it outside this class and pass it in. This is known as dependency injection. A common way to inject objects is to use the constructor. So, let's add the constructor method with an argument for a factory object. For now, we'll use the same class of object we're creating in the index method. We'll use constructor property promotion to save this to a private property of the same name. Then, in the index method, we no longer need to create a factory object, and instead we can use the factory property. So now, the factory object that an object of this class depends on is passed in when the object is created. If we try and run this now, however, we get an error. Too few arguments when the constructor is called. An object of the home controller class is being created automatically by the router when the root matches. With a root like this, we have no control over how that object is created. So let's temporarily change this root to use a closure. Inside the closure, we can create an object of the home controller class and return the result of calling the index method. If we run this now, we get the same error as before that there are too few arguments to the controller's constructor. This is to be expected as we haven't passed any in yet. However, now we can create a new factory object and pass this object to the controller's constructor. And this of course needs a use statement for the PSR17 factory class. Now when we run this, it works. All we've done is move where the factory object is created to outside of the controller class. So now the controller class doesn't have the responsibility of creating the factory object, rather the calling code does. This is known as inversion of control. So now, to create an object of the home controller class, first we have to create any dependencies, in this case a factory object. It could be that the factory class has dependencies of its own, which we'd have to create first before the factory object. This is known as a dependency chain. Rather than having to create all these objects in turn manually, we can use a dependency injection container. A DI container can automatically resolve dependencies when we create an object, no matter how long the dependency chain is. Rather than write a DI container, there are already several excellent implementations of this. I'm going to use the popular PHP DI container. And of course, there's a PHP standard for DI containers, PSR11. The PHP DI container implements this standard. Let's install PHP DI on the command line using Composer. Then, before we create the router object, let's create an object of the DI container class. Then, let's create an instance of the home controller class. We do this by calling the get method on the container, passing in the class name of the object we want. Note that this method is part of the PSR11 container standard interface. This is equivalent to using the new keyword However, the container will automatically resolve any dependencies, and create those objects too. 
So in this case, the home controller depends on a PSR17 factory object. So the container will create one of those automatically before creating the controller object itself. So now we have the controller object, we can use it in the root. Let's pass the controller object to the closure with the use construct. Then inside the closure, we can remove the lines where we're creating the factory object and the controller object. Let's try that and it still works as before. In the home controller class, the constructor requires an object of a specific class. As we saw earlier though, if we type hint this object using an interface, then we can pass in any class that implements that interface without having to change this class. So let's change the type hint of the constructor argument to the response factory interface instead of this specific class, which requires a corresponding use statement for the interface. While we're here, let's also remove the two use statements for these specific factory classes. So now the controller's constructor requires an object that implements this interface. When we run this, now we get an error. This is coming from the container and says that the response factory interface is not instantiable. In other words, it can't create an object of this class. This is to be expected as you can't create objects of interfaces in PHP. To fix this, we need to tell the container which specific class to use when it comes across this interface. To configure the container, we pass some definitions to it. One way to do this with this particular package is to pass an array to the constructor. Let's include an element whose index is the response factory interface class. And for the value, we use the create function from the same package, which creates an object of the specified class. And of course, to use the response factory interface like this, we need a use statement. Let's try that, and now it works. So now we're configuring the container with the specific class we want to use for this interface. To demonstrate how simple it is to change this, let's import the guzzle factory class, then use that instead of the other one in the container definition. And when we run this, it still works. So now we have a single place where we can configure the concrete class to be used for a specific interface. Next, instead of having to create the controller object like this and use a closure for the root handlers, we can configure the router to use the container directly. First, let's import the application strategy class from the router package. Then, after creating the router object, let's create an object of this class, then call the setContainer method on it, passing in the container object. We then call the setStrategy method on the router object, passing in the strategy object. This configures the router to use the container object we created and configured above. Then, we no longer need to create a controller object, and we can change the root back to simply specifying the handler as the class and method. Let's run this one more time, and it still works. So now the router will use the container to create the controller object, which will automatically resolve any dependencies it has. The home controller's dependencies are now just type hinted with interfaces, and we're using a factory to create the dependencies. Let's do the same for the product controller. So let's remove these specific class references and add the use statement for the response factory interface. Then let's add the constructor with a response factory argument. In the methods below, let's create the stream objects using the factory instead of creating the object directly as we were doing before. Likewise with the response object, we'll use the factory instead of creating the object directly. Let's try the two product URLs. 
and they work as before. So, by using dependency injection, the code is cleaner, more flexible, and, as we can inject any dependencies, easier to test. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.